Hello and welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. Today I have the great pleasure to be with my buddy Jeff. And we're gonna talk about automation on machine tools, specifically in this moment, this robo drill. So Jeff, welcome to MTD CNC. Thanks Tony, glad to have you here and appreciate you having us on. Yeah, I appreciate you having me in this incredible building. It's such a magnificent place here in Rochester Hills. Yeah, we're really proud of it and it, it gives us a lot of opportunity to share everything we do at Fanex. Um, not just our robots, not just our um, CNC controls, but everything. All right, Jeff, well, let's hop right into it. Let's talk about automation because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about there about how they're actually used in small batch or large batch or the machines or the complications or taking away jobs. There's just so much misunderstanding, right? So let's learn a little bit. Yeah, Tony, this is, this is our uh, RoboDrill machine, and it's got what we call our QSSR system attached to it, which is really a system designed for that high mix, low volume manufacturer. Um, somebody that wants to run anywhere from a, a few batches of parts, but always changing parts. So QSSR is uh, our tagline for quick and simple startup to robotization. And it really represents an easy connection method between our robo drill machine and uh, one of our FANUC robots. For really for that, you know, lots of different products, lots of different mix, something somebody can bring in and is not intimidating, allows them um, to have an interface through the machine tool to the robot and through the robot to the machine tool. So just kind of simplifies that whole connectivity thing. Well, there's a, a couple of aspects I'd like to focus on. And the first one I'd like to focus on, because there are so many misconceptions, is For you sure. said high mix, yes. low volume, right? Absolutely. Most people think I, if I'm going to buy a robot, I need to have a million parts or 100,000 parts or even 20,000 parts or 10,000 parts, but that's not the case, is it? No, not at all. So we, we use things like vision and other methodologies to present parts to the robot so that you can run a variety of parts. Because, I mean, let's, let's face it, it's a, you know, it used to be that, uh, you know, I want to bring it in to improve my productivity. And you do want to do that, and but now we're having trouble finding people for all these, all these roles. And when you need to run a lot of different parts and similar part families, a system like our QSSR um, really works out for that. And, and it gives you that ability even to get some additional productivity after hours where you can load up a, a set of parts, um, let the robot run and load the machine tool and come in the next day and have those completed parts that you can take onto your post processes or whatever else you need to do. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, you also mentioned that it's somewhat easy, right? It's somewhat easy to get into if we're running a, a low batch size, then it must be easy to transition from one job to the other job. But also, to be fair, you are the expert and you've been doing this for a long time. How easy is this for someone who's maybe a little bit nervous? They own a robo drill already, but they know that they need to get a robot, but they've been hesitant all this time. How easy is it for, to, to learn? It's, it's, it's really easy. And we've made the interface through the machine to allow them that comfort level of, of getting to things through the machine. We have pre-canned programs. So it's not like they have to be a coder where they're gonna write new robot programs. We have an interface already set up with all the I.O., with all the commands. We can add a vision system to it and teach them how to train a new part and how to, how to pick that part. But everything is kind of built in and ready to go. It's even as simple as the interface between the machine and the robot is a plug and play. So we have you know, it's a FANUC controller on both ends. So FANUC knows FANUC. So FANUC wants to talk to FANUC. So just makes it that much easier when you look at a FANUC and a FANUC working together. I like that you said that because that is so true in so many ways. When it's the same, same, same talking to yep. each other, it makes it even easier, right? Yep. I hate to use the word because it's so overused in, but we're used to it, the plug and play thing. I can plug in a USB stick into my computer. It knows what it wants to talk to and it automatically sets it up very similar uh, process here for sure you're absolutely right now the one we're standing in front of right now this is a fixed system absolutely. but you have so many different options both fixed and mobile am I right yeah yeah and when we give the robot things like sight that that which is our vision system when I say sight I'm giving it a vision system that allows us so much more flexibility we can put a collaborative robot on a cart and we can have several machines that that robot could be put in front of. So based on what you're running for the day, you can put the robot in front of the machine that is most in need of being automatically tended. And when we roll the cart up, you think, okay, I got to teach a whole bunch of new points. No, we, we put a vision system on the robot 
the robot basically takes a couple pictures and it knows where it's sitting relative to the machine. Again, that same plug and play, simple connection. They talk, they're set up, and they go. Well, you know we have some viewers right now going, well, that, that just can't be true. That, it just can't be that easy, right? But it is. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And so when we say plug and play, overused word, I mean, we're now comfortable with a USB where 20 years ago we weren't. Let's be comfortable with this as well because it can be that simple. And you guys offer a fantastic training facility for anyone who wants to learn with 24-7 service. Am I right? Absolutely. And tra the training is the important part, whether that's the training on site when you commission the system, whether that's actually sending, you know, to take ownership of the system and come and use our training facility. I mean, we train thousands of students every year on robots and RoboDrill and on CNC. So those resources are all available, along with the education providers that are out there, 1,200, I think, plus of them that are offering FANUC curriculum that also can be used by bringing in people that have that experience to bolster the workforce and bolster the ability to execute and bring these things online um, very quickly and very easily. Well, I want to go a little bit back to what we were talking about, about, you know, a small batch size. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah for sure. Now, as an expert as you are, you've been doing this for a long time. We're yeah. at the FANUC facility here in Rochester Hills, Michigan, right? We, we are at the Mecca here in the U.S. Absolutely. What would you say would be a batch size where I could be confident in getting my ROI for me to purchase one of these and go, well, I'm going to make that money back pretty quickly. Is it 5, 10, 20, 100, 200? I, I look at it more as how many similar product families do you have, not what those batches are. What can I run in that robo drill? And often we say if it fits in a robo drill, you should run it in a robo drill. But if I'm working off of a, you know, a blank and different sizes of similar blanks, then I look at you know, what is that gripping system going to be? If it's just a block, then that, you know, I think uh, you look at the type of gripper you're going to use and the fingers you require. Maybe, maybe it's a finger change. Maybe it's a finger adjustment. Maybe it's uh, with some of our collaboratives now we're using kind of servo grippers. Um, people like Shunk make really good collaborative robot grippers and they make um, grippers um, for regular robots and, and we use them a lot for that and work holding. So we have that, that adjustability. So really, look at your product families. You know, maybe you're only going to run five of one, and maybe you're going to run ten of the next. But if they all fit in that, you know, in that box, then then it's a good fit, and uh, you can bounce back and forth between them too. So maybe you need five of this part, and you're going to come back and need five more the next day. But you need to run a bunch of other parts in the meantime. It it really works. You know, it really is a good fit. Yeah, it's very well said. You know, and I've been into facilities where there are thousands of robo drills and thousands of Fanuc robots yep. all over the place, and you can just see the productivity. I would, I don't like to argue with people, so I always say, I'd like to have a discussion. I would always discuss that this is how we compete on a broader level globally, right? Is by yeah, adding yeah, this sure. automation to these machines. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it makes people more competitive. It allows us, it allows companies to be more competitive. So I want to bring the operator, the person more value, make them more valuable to the process. So instead of having them load and unload the machine, why not have them operate a cell, operate several machines, be responsible for those machines, be responsible for the quality, and let a robot do the manual and tedious and, you know, as the 3Ds we always talk about, dirty, dull, and dangerous. So, you know, you want to let, let robots do that stuff and let's let our people be productive and let them own a process, let them own what they're making. I love that you said that, and it's so, so incredibly important to convey, guys. I like the 3Ds that you just said. Let's remove that and let's get back to the creativity of what we like to do in machining to begin with. Instead of, I got to load a piece, unload a piece, set it here, measure it. Let's let the machines do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you do the, then they can do the other things. They can have multiple. I mean, now you can look at, can I have one operator on multiple machines running multiple cells? Can they then be responsible for the parts coming out? And they can, they can take more pride in the work that they're, producing out of their cells rather than just that mundane in and out. Yeah, it almost it almost sounds like a no-brainer to me. You know, when I when I talk about sure. FANUC, which I get to do a lot, um, and I'm very grateful for when I talk about the robo drill and you have so many different options that can go here or here or in between the two machines that we're standing by, right? It can be conveyors. It, I've seen a, a shelving unit that slides in and out now. We're looking at the one now that's taking, you know, small batch sizes in and out of the machine. You have the mobile ones that yep. you can move all around with the cobots. I mean, the options are darn near limitless. Absolutely. And, you, you, you know, you could use the same robot tending two machines. You can run 
different ways, and they could be two different parts. So you can have two conveyors, one bringing in one size part, one bringing in the other, and with the right tooling, you could be loading both of those and running two batches at once with one robot. I mean, really, in theory, you can have as many machines as you want in, with a robot, depending on your cycle time and what makes sense, because we have things like rails that we can move a robot in, in front and behind, you know, in front and past a machine, and we can put several machines in front of that rail. So, I mean, limitless, as you said. In summary, guys, what are you waiting for? Come on, get into the world of automation. RoboDrill is perfect for that. Talk to your local methods guys, your FANIC guys. I mean, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we Jeff, thank you so much for making my job easy. Thank you so much for being a part of MTD CNC and sharing your story with our global audience. It's very much appreciated. Thank you very much, Tony. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely.